Hi, before we start talking about vacationing with purpose, I'll get everything out of the way. If you could take a quick second and subscribe to the channel by clicking on the submit button below, that would be great. I'll be right back. Thanks. I didn't know you could do that effect in Camtasia 8. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did this green screen where I was able to go through a window in a picture. The first thing that I did was I went to Lowe's and got a board and then I took my green screen paper that I have. You now I'm probably out of focus here. Took the green screen paper that I had and it simply wrapped it around the board. You can probably use any green screen paint, any green paint, any green paper that you want to use. I set up two boxes which you can't see in the frame of the camera and simply set it up against the boxes so it would lay that way and it kind of bounced back and forth so I put a something heavy behind it so that it would be more permanent. So let's go ahead and move on to Camtasia and how I set up the cutout of the green screen. Start with a new project and save it with an appropriate name. Then import the media you are going to need. You're going to need the video, the background sound, the background, and the image. Add several tracks, about seven or eight to work with. On the bottom track, add your background and adjust the width of the background for a little more than the approximate size of the video effect. I like to label my tracks at the start to help keep track of what section of the effect I'm working on. This will be my background track. The next track will be labeled Bottom Back. This will be the back image of where my arms will be hanging over the wall. The next track is the video track. Let's move our video down onto this track. Now here is one key piece of important information when you are actually taping your video. I stood in one position with my arms up for a few seconds, so I would have an idea where the left and right side of the picture would be. Also, scrubbing forward here, you will see I turned and walked off frame. By doing this, it helps with the illusion of moving the picture window off screen and by walking off frame gives me options of how and where I want to stop the effect. Now we are going to start adding our images to the various tracks. We are going to add the image to our bottom back track, making it the full width of the video. Then copy and paste the image to the tracks above the video by clicking on the bottom back track to highlight it, then Ctrl plus C to copy. Click on the empty track above the video track and paste by using Ctrl plus V. We will call this track our cutout. These tracks must be in this order, otherwise this effect doesn't work. So your cutout must be above your video. Then the next track Control plus V again to paste, and we will name it left side. Next track will be our right side. Then on the next track, we won't add the image yet. We'll simply name it bottom front. We need this here so you in the cutout has something to go behind. Then let's turn off all the image tracks for a moment so we can remove the green screen. Click on your video track, then on visual properties. If Visual Properties is not showing, then click on More and you will see it in the drop-down menu. Go to Visual Properties, click on Remove Color. If green is not already selected, then click on the drop-down button and click on Select Color. Then with your eyedropper, click on the green screen. Then adjust your Tolerance, Softness, and Hue sliders. Be careful not to overextend and lose your image. I've already done this, so I know for this particular video, I can set the tolerances at 11, 11, 12, and 0. Once you have the green screen adjustments made, then turn your bottom back track on. Then toggle the crop mode icon on. If the crop mode is off, you will see a white guide outline border. If it is on, you will see a blue guide outline border. Making sure the crop guidelines are on, you click and hold on the top blue square of the guide and crop the image down below the arms, across the bottom where your body ends. Scrub through the video to where the arms are laying on top of the image with the hands over the image. 
click off the image to make the blue guidelines disappear and double check to make sure everything looks good. The wall is not too low or too high. Click back on the image, copy it by clicking on Ctrl plus C. Scroll up to the bottom front track and paste by clicking Ctrl plus V. Scroll down and hide the bottom back track. Scroll back up to the bottom front track and click on it to highlight it. Scroll forward until you disappear behind the wall into just before you pop back up. Leaving your playhead there, click on the end of the image and scroll it back to the playhead. Go back down to the bottom back track and turn it back on. Move your playhead back to the beginning, turn on the left track and click on the track to highlight it. We should still be in crop mode. We are working on our left side, so click and hold on the right blue square and drag to the left until you are to the left of the arm. Scrub out to make sure the hand and arm does not overlap the left side. We now turn on the right track and highlight it. Click and hold on the left blue square and drag to the right until you are to the right of the arm. We then scrub it to make sure our hands have room and are not butting up against or hidden behind the right wall. Now turn on the cutout track. This is where it gets a little bit tricky and a little bit fun. Make sure you have highlighted the track. Click and hold on the left blue square and slide it to the right. What we want to do is match it up to the yellow guideline, but to be on the safe side so no background shows, we want to move it a little bit over to the left so it slightly overlaps. Then we'll do the same thing on the right side. Go up to where it's yellow and then move it just a little over to the right side. Then we'll do the bottom, same thing. Now we will toggle back to the regular mode with the white guidelines. Now we are going to start working with our animation. Click on the visual properties and move the playhead just a little bit to the right. Then click on the add animation button. Hold your shift key down, click and hold on one of the bottom corners of the cutout. Move inwards until you see part of the top of your head and some of the left side of the hand. Now you are going to keep adding animations as you scrub forward and the body behind the cutout moves. You want to keep everything matching as closely as possible. So we scrub forward just until we see the body turn a little, click on the add animation button, Put your cursor over one of the center circles until it turns green and you see a little circular arrow. Then slightly tilt the cutout image. Then we are going to scrub forward again to add another animation. What I like to do is try to keep the top of the head showing as much as possible to help with the illusion. So continue with the scrubbing forward, click on the add animation button, moving the cutout image to match the body behind it. You can also now start seeing why we have to have the video and cutout tracks below the left, right, and bottom front tracks, which allows it to appear to fall behind them. Keep scrubbing and adding animations to the body movement until the image is completely out of frame. Quickly test to make sure everything looks right. Now group the image and video tracks together by holding your shift key down and clicking on each track until they are all highlighted. Right click on your mouse and select group or you can hit Ctrl plus G. Right click on your mouse again and remove all empty tracks. Rename the group track as cut out effect. You can also name it here. Then right clicking on our background track, we'll insert a track above and we'll also add a track above our cutout effect. This one we will call our splash or logo sting track. This one will be our background audio. Lock the background track. Then I'm going to scrub out to where I'm starting to walk off just where my hand is about to touch the right wall. Then I'm going to cut off this section of the track because I won't need it. Now we need to add an animation for the effect that I am walking off with the image and taking it with me. I'll move the playhead close to the very end. Click on the visual properties, click on the add animation button, and slide the video completely off to the right, keeping it in alignment with the yellow guidelines. 
So what I want to do is make sure my playhead is right over the center of the beginning of my animation on the cutout effects group. Now I'm going to add my splash logo sting, which I have in my library, and bring it down to the track and move it right up against the playhead. I locked the cutout effect track, making sure my splash logo sting track is highlighted. I move this off to the left, making sure everything stays aligned with the yellow guidelines. Move the playhead a couple seconds past the cutout effect and cut and delete part of the splash logo sting that will not be needed. Move the playhead right over the center of the end of the animation on the cutout effect track so the animations on both tracks will match. Make sure your splash logo sting track is highlighted. Click on the visual properties, click on add animation, and make sure the beginning of the animation starts at the beginning. Now simply slide the splash logo sting image to the right until it is fully in frame and lined up with the yellow guidelines. Move the playhead to the beginning. Click on the clip bin and add your background audio to the track. Scrub forward to where you have just popped up and are about to speak. Then cut and delete the audio there. Making sure your audio track is highlighted, click on the audio tab, move your playhead to where you want to start fading out, and then click on the fade out button. Unlock your background track, move your playhead to the end of the splash logo sting, make sure your background track is highlighted and cut the end of the background image off. Now it's time to produce it. Click on produce and share. Make sure MP4 only up to 1080p is selected because that is the size of your video. If your video is 720, then select the MP4 up to 720p. Click next. Keep the same name or change it to whatever is appropriate. Save the location so you can easily find it. Then click on finish. Dum -de dum -de dum -de dum dum -de dum. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do this and look forward to seeing your version. Please feel free to leave a comment below. If you could also take a quick second and subscribe to the Top Shelf VA channel, that would be great. You'll be the first to receive new episodes in the future. If you would like to learn another cool Camtasia trick, click on the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Naomi with TopShelfVA.com. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day.